Okay, moving on, we're number 14. We haven't really talked about this in class yet. What I want to do is just kind of address it right now. So I'm going to slow down for a second and talk exactly about what's going on here. <clears throat> Let's look at what happens when I try to get the variables together. And so we talked about multi-step equations on Monday before I, before I was out. And we discussed that we need to collect all the variable terms to the left or the right and all the constants to the other side. So we either have to have this, like variables, and then the constants over here, right? Or we have to have constants and the variables over here. Um, I think for this, um, we'll put the constants on the left side because there's already constants there. There are no constants here. So if I just move this negative, this 15 by minusing 15x, we'll be okay. Now let's talk a little bit about this because I think this is a little bit new. So this is the first time that you are subtracting something that has an x attached to it on both sides, okay? You used to, like if you look here on most of these steps, we're minusing 24, but that doesn't have an x on it. And as we go back, you know, we're plusing 2, but that doesn't have an x on it, right? We're adding 15, but that doesn't have an x on it. We're minusing 10, but that didn't have an x on it. Now we're, we're trying to minus something that has an x on it. And you're so used to seeing that whatever has the x, that's what, that means divide. But that's not true. When we take this fif minus 15x, that whole entire thing, not just the 15, right? Not just the 15, and not just the 3 like it was here. Not just the 15. The whole 15x is going to get gone to 0. So we had 15x's. We took away 15x's, right? We had 15 um, hats, let's say, and we took away 15 hats, okay? That's gone. We do it to both sides. 15 minus 15 here is 0. So what we're left with is negative 23 equals 0. So two things about this problem that are tricky. The second thing about this problem that's tricky, other than the fact that now you're moving x's, okay, with addition and subtraction. So remember, you're using, I want you to know that. Use addition and subtraction to collect, collect or, as we say, move terms. You're going to move whole terms, and they can be variable or constant. But now, once we've done that, and that's kind of handled now, we have a statement that's false. This is never going to happen. It's not possible. So what we're going to say is no solution because this is a bogus statement. It doesn't make any sense. So I want you to know that it's no solution. That's your answer. Okay? What that means is that there's not a single value of x. There's no solution to this equation. That no number you can plug in here and here that will make this equation equal or balance. Okay? Remember how we talked about the solution is the x value that makes the equation work. No x value will work in this equation. Nothing. No number. All right, so hopefully that's okay. If this is not good, rewind and rewatch this because this is probably the toughest problem so far. Yeah, definitely the toughest. So these two right here, both a little bit of a challenge. Um, let's go on. Keep talking about these homework problems. Number 15 is not so bad. Number 15 we can handle. Um, what we got to do is get the variables together. So. A real quick overview of what those steps were from Monday, right? That would be simplify. Oops, L I. Oop. Simplify both sides. That was with CLT. Remember, a lot of you asked me what CLT means. That means combine like terms. Okay. Or and or distribute. And I just said dist for that. Okay. And then step two, this is a recap, okay, you don't need to have this written down if you've already written it. Step two is collect the variables or collect the variable terms on either side, you pick, left or right. and put the constant terms on the other side. You want to have them separated, okay? So 
So once you pick, you want the constant terms to be on the opposite side. So what you're going to have is all variable terms on one side and all constant terms on the other, and they're going to combine, and they're going to make an, a real simple equation for you to solve. So we're trading our hard equation in for an easier equation. Let's trade this hard equation in for an easier one. Let's put our variables on the left like this. Okay, well, all our variables will go here, all our constants will go here. Okay, now because this is a variable, it doesn't belong, so we are going to add m and add m. Okay, now we're moving a variable term, okay? So we had minus an m plus an m, right? Whatever that is. Um, what could be a minus? Uh, we were down in the ground a foot, and then we decided to climb up a foot, right? So we had dug down a foot, right? And then we filled that in with, with sand or whatever you want to call it. Any way you want to look at that, they're canceling each other out. Okay? Not my greatest analogy, but hopefully it's a little helpful. So now you have 3m because this is 1m, right? So plus 1m, if you want to think of it that way. Minus 9 equals 6. Notice that there was no simplifying on this. Step 1 was already done. Um, what we're going to do now is because the variables are here, this is a constant. It does not belong on this left side. Okay? So we add it cancel it out. We get 3m equals 15, and this is a very simple. We just divide by 3, and I'm hoping that those types of things right there, I'm hoping that this blue circle here, when you see that, I'm hoping that that becomes just a quick automatic fix. You know how to solve it. Okay, so there's the answer to that one. Um, number 16 will be a little bit of a curveball, okay? kind of similar to that last problem we talked about, uh, which was number 14. So number 16, a little bit of a curveball here. Well, we know step one is to distribute or combine like terms. So let's just do that right now and satisfy that one. So 36 minus 4d, okay? And this is 36 minus 4d. Um, let's go with this form, I guess, again. The variables on the left, the constants on the right. So that means we're going to have to move this 4d by adding it, okay, minus 4 plus 4, right? So remember, this is just taking away, right? Um, someone took four dogs from your house, and then they went and brought them back, so nothing really changed. If we are adding 4 there, we have to add 4 there. That's actually going to go to 0. So all we're going to have is 36 equals 36. Um, and there are no variables here. The x's, the d's, whatever you want to call them, are gone. When you have a statement like this, okay, similar to a statement like this, however, this one is false. So that's no solution. But if you actually wind up with this, and it's true, which it is, right, 36 does equal 36, this is called infinite solutions. Okay infinite solutions. What I want you to think about is any number will work for d. So let's just check it. Let's just make sure that works. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase a big chunk of this right here so that we can do this. Hopefully that's all right. Okay, so let's look at this. Any number for x, okay, somebody should just be able to shout out a number. If I was in class, I'd say shout out a number. But I'm just going to pick a uh, 3, okay? And so I'm going to say if d was equal to 3, would that work? Question mark. Does d equal 3 work in this equation? Well, let's find out. We have 36 minus 4 times d, which was 3, equals 4 parentheses 9 minus d, which is 3 again. Okay? So I replace the d's with 3 because they're equal. Let's keep going here. Let's just change colors so we don't have everything looking like one blob. So 36 minus 12 would have to equal, well, this is 6 times 4, so that's 24. And yeah, that's 36 minus 12 is 24, so 24 equals 24. Yeah, it worked. So infinite solutions is what we're looking for for the answer to that, okay? It's a different term than you're used to. All right, we're almost through the homework. Last one. 
Um, I just wanted to do this one because it was a little bit longer. So we're going to start by combining like terms and we're going to make that 6x. Okay. Everything else I'll copy down in black so that you can see that it was unchanged. Okay. Now the, f the cool thing here is that once that step is done, really the rest of this is no different than any of the problems. You combine like terms and now look at it. It's not really any different. We, we decide where we want to put those variables. We'll put them on the left. We've been generally doing that, okay? And all the constants on the right. Variable terms, constant terms. First two days of school, that's what we really, really hammered home, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's talk about that. This is a variable term. It needs to be on the left. So we need to move it by adding 2x, okay? Minus 2 and plus 2, right? Minus 2x plus 2x cancels to 0. We are plusing 2x here to keep it balanced, right? Only fair. So now we have 8x plus 18 equals 10. Okay, and we need to minus this 18 because this is a constant and the constants belong on that side, on the right side. They cannot be on the left. So we minus it to cancel it out so it's just gone now. We're not like we're not like we're gonna pick it up and drag it over there. We're gonna minus it to cancel it out and minus it here to be fair. So that's negative eight, and that will give me x equals negative one when I divide that out. Remembering that this equation in the box should be a joke by now. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, so that is that's everything for the homework.